All right, I'm in New York, more hotel series interviews. I got the man, the myth, the legend, Eshawn Burgundy. Don't you go nowhere. Yo, what's going on? It's Bruce along with KingsDreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live out God's dream for your life. Big shout out to the Patreon community, the most creative online community, holding us down, taking care of the channel, getting interviews early, early access to Fan Love Friday, all that good stuff. You can check that out, link in the description. But listen, uh, man, I got one of the one of the dopest lyricist, creative minds um, in our CHH community. I've been trying to get this brother on the channel for a minute. I've finally been able to be in the same vicinity as him. Um, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, Eshawn Burgundy, how you feeling, bro? Salute, man. Yeah? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. This is fun, bro. I am uh, I was in Atlanta, trying to yeah. catch you in Atlanta. Couldn't catch you in Atlanta. And he was like, yo, I'm in Jersey. Finally been able to do it. You got your beautiful kids with you, right. man. So. Right. Uh, uh, Foggy Raw's in the in-studio audience, just in case he makes one of the uh, frames. <laughs> um, uh, is that the phone? Okay. So, look, um, you got your start. I heard about you through a secular producer acquaintance of mine oh, yeah. named Hezekiah. Super oh, you know dope producer. Guy. Yeah. MySpace yeah. days. Yeah. MySpace days. And Hezekiah, we started working together. He sent me some crazy beats, man. And he was like, yo... Oh, you do Christian rap? Like, yeah. have you heard of Ishan? And I was like, nah, I don't know who Ishan is. And that was my first impression. Really? And what I appreciated about that was that even though you had this radical transformation in Jesus, it's about 12 years ago, it's a minute ago, yeah, it's um, is that you were still mad connected with the local scene in the local community in yeah. Philly at the time. Yeah. Um, was that by design or was like, were you intentional about like, I'm gonna stay connected in this local community a Philly artist, or was that just, those are just your homies? Yeah, nah, it was, so the way, the way I came to know the gospel mm -hmm. was in a real raw, authentic way. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the pastor that shared the gospel with me when I was probably like 19 years old was mm -hmm. in South Philly, and he was just, he was just raw with it. Like, mm -hmm. I came in there, you know, after hanging with all people of, of all types of faiths, and religions and beliefs, mm -hmm. I come in there looking at a pastor like, what you gonna tell me? Mm -hmm. you know I mean? like, I, mm -hmm. I know this Christianity stuff is fake, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, he just gave it to me raw. And so we kind of kept that up. Me and the, little, the, the group I had, mm -hmm. it was called Society Park, our rap group. Yeah, yeah I remember that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we just, after we you know, kind of came to Christ, it was just like, let's just go right yeah. back to Ra we, Radical, yeah. right? Yeah. So we stayed in the streets, you know? Mm. And so we didn't, you know, you know, go to the churches and like vanish or disappear. We just, mm. you know, stayed around. Mm. Mm. That's dope, man. That's very, that's very refreshing. Would you say that people who come from um, a, a street element, coming from the, that, that lifestyle, when they get radically converted like that, that they tend to be a bit more like overt with their faith like that? Or do you think it's, um, do you, do, you, do you think that's different? You know what I'm saying? Because it's almost like the transition almost feels like you were, you were so into this thing yeah. and now you're so into this thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where right. In Cali, it's more like this. Like in Cali, it's almost like they start gangbanging for Jesus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and so I don't know if it's like that on the East Coast, but was that the mentality? Like, yo, we was, we was working so hard for this thing. Now we going radical for the other thing. No, I don't think that was the mentality. It was just, it was just, it was normal. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like our, our, our transition and our conversion, I, I speak for myself um, in particular, it was just normal, man. Okay. It, you know, I, I had been hearing about Jesus my entire life. I had been watching my mother pray and believe for things and, and I've seen those things happen. Mm. Um, so me, it was just a natural, like I used to, you know, even though I was in some 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 strange circles, mm -hmm. some wild circles, even when I was in the streets, mm -hmm. like, and I was with the dope boys, and we had coke in the car, and we driving around, mm -hmm. driving off, they would still look at me like I was the the quote unquote the angel out of the crew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. they would they come to me for prayer. <laughs> really? I'm right here with you. 
Now, granted, I, I never gave myself over to that stuff. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, I was always with them, yeah. but I never did it. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they always looked at me like I was, you know, sort of removed from what they were a part of. And yeah. so they were always looking at me for guidance, yeah. looked at, you know, want me to pray for them. Like, it was wild. Like, I remember one time, it was in the streets, and my man was, uh, it was, uh, it was New Year's. Uh-huh. We out there busting guns or whatever. And my man shot up the street, huh. and somebody fell. Wow. And it was like, yo, so we grab all the guns, put the guns in the car, we driving, go drop, go stash the guns. And my man was like, yo, say a prayer. Yo, pray. Pray real quick. Pray. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we praying. And it was just like, it, 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 it showed me that people kind of looked at me in a different way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, I, felt, I felt set apart even in those, my younger years. Mm. That's wild. Um, so then, so I'm I'm kind of hearing about you like through that circle. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh, Christian, you know, Christian rapper. Um, there's a Society Park. Was that the collective? Society Park. Yeah. So I'm already hearing about you, and then um, I feel like all of a sudden you had this breakout moment. You start dropping music, and people kind of you know checking for you. But I feel like you had this breakout moment with um, the Andy Minio record. You know what I'm saying? Once I started doing Christian music, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. like that was like a um, that was like a boom, like Ishan's here, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't like you were just kind of like this best kept secret, but you kind of was on the, you know, one of the biggest records of one of the newest artists that was super popping. Um, Would you say that's kind of when things started building the momentum in terms of like you being recognized as a pillar in the Christian hip hop space? No, I I don't honestly don't think, um, I think, I think the record, being recognized after the Andy Mineo thing, um, was a thing, mm-hmm. but I think I, I, I was, you know, pretty, um, you know, I guess well known in our circles mm-hmm. before that. Um, I, I guess I just mean what it, it, you became more of like a topper tier artist, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Like a more of in the in the visibility of Christian rappers. Honestly, I'm not sure. Okay, I don't know. I remember, I remember having like eleven thousand followers on Instagram, mm-hmm. and then doing a little small tour with Andy, mm-hmm. like three shows in Florida, mm-hmm. and he posted a picture, and I got like three thousand followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe you know, maybe I was being exposed to people I didn't know, but I, you know, at that point before before that happened, I thought I had a pretty good mm-hmm. um, foundation mm-hmm. in it because when I it was like two thousand and two thousand and eight mm-hmm. when I discovered Christian hip hop. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know it existed. Right. But mm-hmm. I knew mad people that was a part of it. Like, I knew Cross Movement. Mm-hmm. I knew R. Swift. I knew people like Jay Johnson mm-hmm. and a couple others just from Philly. Mm-hmm. And so when I, when, I, uh, when I got married and I saw Lecrae on my wife's top five mm-hmm. on uh, MySpace, I'm like, who this boy? <laughs> she was like, who this man on your like, top five? <laughs> it was like Lecrae, then it was somebody else, then it was The Truth. I'm like, yeah, but who, who, who's this guy? Yeah. And um, she was like, oh, he's a Christian rapper. I'm like, yeah. So I went to his MySpace page mm-hmm. and the whole world opened up. I was like, wow. Uh, so this okay. is a thing. Because yeah. before in the world, I was always the Christian dude right, right, right. blending amongst everybody. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. I was like, oh, wow, I could be around the brethren. Yeah, yeah. I, I was blown away. It was a cool community, especially back then. You know what it was beautiful, man. Yeah. So I think the thing that's always been unique about you is that you've always been a multi-dimensional artist. You know, what I'm saying you did the music, but then you be crushing it on a video. And yeah. um, how did like how, how did that come apart? Was that something after you started rapping and and, and you building that side? Because you directed quite a few like bigger yeah. Christian hip hop videos around that same time. Yeah. No. It 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 started with me not having resources. Okay. Um. Well. Not having finances. Same. I'm the same. You know what I'm saying? That's why you yeah, see this. You I learned it because I didn't have yeah, nobody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I started with me. I yeah. started with a little camera I bought from Best Buy. Okay. Really, Hezekiah. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he showed me the way. Shout out Hezekiah, to Hezekiah. Man. Yeah, salute Hezekiah. Um, he hit me up a long time ago before I even you know started doing it mm-hmm. on this level. It was probably, mm-hmm. uh, I forget what year it was. He was like, yo, you want to do a video? $35. I'm like thirty five dollars. He was like, yeah, oh, he offered do- to pay you. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, no, no. He said um, he was gonna shoot a video for me uh-huh. for thirty five dollars. Oh wow! I said, really? You gonna do a video with thirty five? He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm a, it's gonna look crazy. I said, all yeah. right, cool. We 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 link. Is that video Did still the video? Up? I don't. I can't find it nowhere. Uh, I gotta ask him for it. But it was raw. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. He he shot it with a a little point and shoot. Yep. And uh, edited it up. And it was crazy. I yeah. was like, oh, so you can really do this. Like, yeah. you don't need a big budget. And yeah, you yeah. just, you know, do it from the muscle. Yeah. 
And he was like, yeah. So I picked up a camera from, from Best Buy and I just started shooting little videos. And the video that I shot, I, sh I, was, I was working, I was doing deliveries uh -huh. um, at night. And I stopped in the back of the supermarket and I put the camera up mm -hmm. and I did this verse from this song called Give Me Five from mm -hmm. my Street Corner Store mixtape joint. Mm -hmm. And um, I recorded that and put it out. Mm -hmm. And then it showed up on the south.com. Mm -hmm. I didn't send it to him, it just showed up. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, Ishan Burr. I'm like, how these people even know who I am? Mm -hmm. Please turn that off. Um, I'm like, how, how these people know who I am? Mm -hmm. And they just was like, yo, it just came up on the radar. Mm -hmm. And then the community just started kind of hollering, hollering around mm -hmm. me. Like, I didn't walk into Christian hip hop like, yo, I'm here, mm -hmm. what's up? Mm -hmm. It was just like, I, I was on the south.com looking and I saw a video of mine. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I, w I would say that you're, you're integration into the community it was very organic and seamless you know? yeah, um, yeah so that was dope so um then then you had uh you you was just doing your thing i was thought you know Isha was doing his thing bubbling and then it was like boom then you was on uh humble beast for a minute you know yeah. what i'm saying which seemed to kind of help you tap into another audience you know what i mean how was that how did that come together because that was mad unexpected for me yeah. it fit aesthetically from a quality of art level because mm -hmm. i felt like they were delivering stuff aesthetically really dope and right. you've always been dope because you do the visuals you know what i'm saying and all right. that but how did that come together connecting with those dudes well um braille hit me up and said they were going to be in, in 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 dallas okay and i was living there at the time and this is right after i dropped my first album mm -hmm. um blood rushing to my head and uh everything was kind of just dying down a little bit mm -hmm. from that and uh i was in Texas, brand new uh, state, new environment, and just trying to, you know, make it work with mm -hmm. the family. And they came along, um, invited me to the show. I came out to the show. And then when I went to the show, they was like, yo, we want you to come out to Portland mm -hmm. and um, just hang out with us. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't think anything of it. I just was like, all right. So I went out to Portland to hang out with them. And my second day there, they was like, yo, we want you to be a part of the team. Mm -hmm. I was like, Wow, I'm blown mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just uh, decided to be a part of the team. Um, really, you know, my wife wasn't with it. You know, I, I had a few reservations based on some things that were said, um, some red flags, but I just, I pushed past it. And I mean, I was like, yo, this is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My wife was like, nah, I don't think you should do it. I did it anyway. I got, I did it behind her back, mm. which is not good. Yeah, ouch. And um, it turned out not to be the best fit or situation for me in the end. Mm -hmm. But you know, we came out with a good record, you know, people mm -hmm. blessed by that by that album, man. So mm -hmm. I'm thankful, grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all along you're continuing to do videos or did you slow down with the videos? Yeah, so I so I was trying to I was trying to just find a way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew I don't have no degree or anything, so I was like, man, getting a regular job at this point, it ain't really going to pay or take care of my family. Mm -hmm. So I got this talent and people, you know, seem to be supporting me in this. Let mm -hmm. me just do more of it. Yeah. And so instead of doing more music, I started the video stuff. I figured mm -hmm. I could do this. People like my videos. People will pay me to do it. Let me do it. Mm -hmm. So I did it, but still had a hunger and passion for the music at the same time. Yeah, so it was of hard course, of course. trying to juggle both. Right. And when I got with Humble Beast, they was like kind of, you know, put everything else down and just focus uh, on being an artist. Okay. I was like, cool, like, but I need to make bread. Mm -hmm. And um, they had made, a, you know, a bunch of promises, you know, we can do this, we do that for you, you know. I was like, all right, cool. But then when that stuff never really transpired, mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to make some money. And they was like, well, go get a job. And I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to making music videos. <laughs> I go back to making music videos. Like, I can make more than that than yeah. on the job. Yeah. But I said, okay, let me try to get a job. You know, man, I went and got a regular job, and it just, it really wasn't um, making ends meet. You know what I mean? So I just felt like I had to do more of what I was talented or, or gifted to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's when I was like, all right, let's, let's just do the album. Let's do the album. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just flew out there, did the album. We did the album in like, the whole album, we did it like nine days. Mm -hmm. Dope record. Knock it out. Yeah. Dope record. I, I, I'm asking all of the questions about the video because I'm really trying to figure out if we're going to get like an Eshawn Burgundy YouTube channel or Eshawn mm. Burgundy podcast, something. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm at with it all, man. Okay. I honestly don't, man. I don't know what the next move is. Uh -huh. I don't know how 
Um, I'm going to approach the next phase. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just in prayer. Mm-hmm. I got some ideas, but yeah. I'm not um, really at liberty to say. Yo. Yeah. Kingstream Entertainment. Julio, 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 Julio Jones. I'm from Atlanta, you throw me the ball and I scoop in the zone. They hit me up for a deal like it's something I do on the phone. Just cause it's me in the studio, don't mean I do it alone. Julio, 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 Julio Jones.